Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. First carry for Nick Chubb. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Number Just a three-yard gain there. The ball carrier. But you might remember Nick Chubb. He had a heck of a game last year in week four in what turned out to be a 40-25 Browns win over these Ravens. He finished with 165 yards, three rushing touchdowns. Of course, never fear for the Ravens, though. After that loss, they went on a run. They would win their next 12 in a row to finish the regular season at 14-2. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 39 yards, the distance covered on the catch and run. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a start right out of them. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. He's tackled at the 32-yard line. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing, and I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid, part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Throwing on second and eight. Mayfield. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Derek Wolf. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to ski in the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, meaning yeah. the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. And they will stop him short. They get him to the ground at the 27. No first down. Oh, they stopped him shy of the marker. Thought they were bringing up fourth down. And then that penalty. Let's face it. They thought they had bent but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. A bad time for a roughing penalty. And they get the gift of a first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw to the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second and five from the eight. Mayfield. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Mayfield on third and two. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll run for it. Chubb. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have taken the early lead. CD, that call, it took some guts. It's not like they were at the one-yard line. They had some distance to go. They certainly did. And, you know, a lot of people might say that's fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants type of coaching. 
but it's also sending a message out there. We're going to be unpredictable. You can't prepare for anything with us. You never know which way we're going to go. We zig, you zag. And now some serious opening drive momentum. the six and he takes this near the 25 just a little pass there call it the 26 and now Baltimore gets set to take the field Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26 from the shotgun, he'll throw. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now it's Jackson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Third and two. Here's Jackson. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Defense was expecting run, and they're dealt a pass of over 15 yards. Hey, partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? And now he'll tuck it and run. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. A collegiate star here in the Buckeyes State. It's J.K. Dobbins. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 40-yard line. He's tackled at the 40-yard line. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. This is third and one. Very likely four-down territory, even if they don't get it, though. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up, and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. This time Jackson will throw it. Caught by Snead over the middle. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. A three-yard gain on the play. Brings up third down. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. 
from the gun. Jackson out to his left. He may try and run for this. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. On first and 10, it's Dobbins. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. And this is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Olivier Vernon coming in with some force for the sack that time. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Third. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And down inside the 15 he goes. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. That is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. To throw again. Jackson. That's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can... And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Willie Sneed there to make the grab. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. Personally, for him, a great opening drive. He had three catches, including the touchdown. That felt like tremendous scouting, great film watching, and creating a game plan to start this off, not only to get him involved, but to send a message to the defense. You can have a lot to handle in this one. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. At the 23, it's second and 12. 
working out of the gun. Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Rashard Higgins was the one he was looking for. And it'll bring up third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On third down, Mayfield. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. And now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And finally, down at the 36-yard line. A big-time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. The elements here are definitely going to be a factor. You're going to have some drop balls playing in conditions like this. Yeah, you got to minimize them as best you can. That means 100% of your focus has got to be on making the catch, not on what you do afterwards. Look it all the way in first. On second down, a run with Dobbins. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? These two teams all tied after one. With the score tied, seven to seven. The Ravens on third down. No problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This is third and eight. Jackson from the shotgun. The Browns D locked in on third down. Brings up fourth. Love the idea, love the concept, but you gotta leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl Justin kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. These kickers now it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And the Browns getting set to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. 
think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Brings up second and two. A run for Nick Chubb. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Patrick Queen. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. And two. The Browns on third down, just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. And he's got his man, that's Landry. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Mayfield on target to Landry for a Browns first down. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. Mayfield on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. A second and 10 on a chilly, snowy December day. And I must say, I'm loving it. Kind of putting me in the holiday spirit. Charles, Charles hates it. And has given me the evil eye, folks. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards, now it's third and five. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. And that went off the mark a little late with a throw. Marlon Humphrey on the coverage. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. From the gun, it's Jackson. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. Jackson. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the gun, Jackson being chased out left. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately, had an alert teammate who was able to get it. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 49-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, and that'll make it a second down. A gain of four. 
It's now second and six at the 45-yard line. On second down now, Dobbins. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. For Baltimore, the tackle by Sione Taki Taki. It's a gain of a yard, and it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun, Jackson. That's complete. It's Devin Duvernay. First target, first catch, and a first down. A gain of seven. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Rolling to his right. Now he'll pull it down. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. It's a pick and we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Working with his second and four. From the gun, Jackson. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Right back to Dobbins on first. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? We love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. In the red zone, precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one. And that one falls incomplete. A 24-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on I was. Partner. I was. It sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting a three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down.
Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. Peoples Jones returning. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30 yard line. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. A first down throw for Mayfield. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That catch good for only a couple. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football. And the Ravens have got it! Malik Harrison. Lamar Jackson sacked. Fumble on the play. Recovered by Baltimore. He stiff arms him. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the keeper, and it'll lead to a second down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice... And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens will extend their lead. Well, Lamar Jackson remembers seven rushing touchdowns in his MVP season of 2019, and he's into the end zone here as well. And when you hear that seven rushing touchdowns in 2019, doesn't it surprise you a little bit? Yeah, you almost expect more, right? Yeah, in your mind, you think Lamar Jackson got in the end zone a bunch more. That might be what he does in 2020. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Peoples-Jones returning. And they'll get him down inside the 30th to 27. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. At the 39-yard line. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. The Browns try to get back and set quickly here. Time ticking away. Mayfield throwing complete there to Hooper. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 43. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first and 10, Mayfield. His throw incomplete. He was looking for the Michigan Wolverine, Donovan Peoples-Jones. And it's second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now here's a throw, and that's Taewon Taylor with it. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They have the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam. And he broke that one up. And with the snow here, maybe asking too much of the kicker to try a field goal. So instead, offense on the field, they'll go for it on fourth down. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. Kareem Hunt stops short of the sticks. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Operating from the gun, Jackson. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. There's really no reason to change what they've been doing to this point. They've got the lead. They've looked good this first half. I agree with you totally, and a lot of coordinators, play callers feel exactly the same way. Until you stop what I'm doing, why should I make any changes? But there are a few that kind of outguess themselves or try to out. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From the gun, Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A couple of third-year guys, a couple of pro bowlers. Jackson to Andrews for the Ravens first. Ravens first down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. He'll run it. The quick feet by Jackson, and he is out of bounds inside the 35. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Ravens. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Operating from the gun. Jackson, and now he's going to use his legs. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It's a 39-yard attempt, right hash. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock. 
and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. a touchback this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away Peoples Jones returning so we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far as we'll head down to Orlando that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports halftime report coach the lake effect snow set to continue for the second half of action as we are back underway. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Mark Andrews, a first-time Pro Bowler, the intended target. But it'll be second down. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Throwing again. Jackson caught right side at Snead and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half and this one number five. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. From the gun, Jackson. He's going to take off with it. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. Off the play fake to Dobbins, here's Jackson. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. He can run for it, and he will. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But if the assignment gets mixed up, that's the end result. 
And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot 6'4, six, 6'5, six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Operating from the gun, Jackson. This will be caught at about the six. Jackson. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even ten years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Taking it in from four yards out as the Ravens push further out in front. Offensive line coaches always tell their guys, if we score touchdowns, that means we get to the end zone first. That's exactly what those blockers did, clearing the way for their back. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. the score, Ravens 30, Browns 7. Justin Tucker. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The Browns take over first. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. A gain of three, second down. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after them now. On second and seven, Mayfield. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. A 
nice job getting free on the return for 13 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Ravens offense back out there. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. goal, Baltimore. That was so well-timed, just a perfect throw on the slam. Hit him on the move, didn't he? Now he's going against the grain of the defenders coming over to try and stop him. That allowed for that additional yardage downfield. Well, that didn't take long. One play, and we're already looking at a first and goal situation. And he will score! Touchdown, Baltimore! Touchdown, Lamar Jackson! His second touchdown of the night. And this offense is running away with this one. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this carries into the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach comes screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, Mayfield throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Jarvis Landry, Pro Bowl wideout, the intended receiver. But now it'll be third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Mayfield to throw it. Escaping the pressure right. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's fourth. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Fielded at the 33. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me, trying to get to the airport. That's the roads true. will be fairly that, clear that is by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Larry, Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. 
four yards. And result of that one, a nice four yard Second gain. So you six. can use that to set up your play action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. This pass into the arms of Sneed. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield. And there's another completion. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Caught by Snead over the middle. Jackson. And he's got this down to the 35. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good. Soft in spots. There's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Andrews. And he gets it down to the 32. That catch good for only a couple. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. First down and more for Jackson. And down to the 16-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he claps down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. On second down. Dobbins, and they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Jackson down to throw on third down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And we're back now here in Cleveland, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Peoples-Jones returning. And shedding through the tackle. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain, no gain on the screen there. It's second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips to play off. <laughs> the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that. That's why they're able to get to him on it. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. 
this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. The Browns on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Derek Wolf, his second sack of the night. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 37. Now the third-year man out of Rutgers, it's Gus Edwards. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. And it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. This is third and eight. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. On is the punter, Cook, who sends it away. Pulled in at the 24. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Mayfield. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver, plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Mayfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. By the Ravens. They'll take over first and 10 at the 21-yard line. On first down, Dobbins. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Baltimore. He sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the plays we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. One yard gain brings up second and nine at the Browns' nine-yard line. 
Now it's second and nine. This time, Jackson will throw it. He's going to run again. It's a gain of six on the play, and they're going to have a third down. It's a gain of six, and it's third down. Jackson looking to throw on third. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. The D tackle, Sheldon Richardson, came barreling in for the sack. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. Ravens, 40 so yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Justin Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. Peoples Jones returning. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. At their own 28 yard line. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He's back to throw here to start the drive. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Oh, he nearly picked it. Mayfield. Maybe daylight in front of him if he could have held on. Instead, second down. Marlon, well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On third down, Mayfield. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. The field position game, such an overlooked fashion, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes his forward for about six. 
And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll go again with Dobbins. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there, but how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. The ball carrier. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Oh, Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Gus Edwards, the Baltimore. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Larry Ogunjobi on the tackle in his fourth year now out of the University of Charlotte. A big part of this young Browns defense. Ball at the 23, second and eight. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down and about the length of the football. It's a gain of eight. Brings up third. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Another run here with Dobbins. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They needed a yard. They got it. First down. Brand, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them. So this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it. And the clock continues to roll. They'll run on first down. Dobbins. Second down, it's Edwards. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it's it at the 49. 11 yards there, first down. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. On first down, Dobbins, and he's going to take this across the 50 in the Browns' territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. It's a pickup. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. They'll keep it on the ground. Dobbins. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. 
they think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Cleveland.